What's up? Welcome back to my channel, the best place for hardworking millennials to bring positive change to their careers. Now, I've released two videos about my Oxford PhD graduation. One of them is an edited version and the other one's an uncut version. I thought I'd also share about what someone who graduates from Oxford with a PhD does. And this video will be a reflection on that. And I've got five main points I want to share with everyone. Now, one year has passed since wrapping up my PhD with the official supplication. It's actually you don't finish your PhD at the graduation, although that's when you can officially call yourself a PhD. But the actual passing point is something called the supplication. And a supplication is basically when you are granted the right to call yourself a PhD. And essentially what that process is, is you submit your thesis your or your dissertation. In America, that's what you call it. And then afterwards, you go through the defense. After the defense, they go through a review process where they see a, whether, you know, minor revisions, major revisions, or no revisions, or an outright fail, right? And, you know, for major revisions and minor revisions, they give you a chance to redo it. For a fail, you also get a chance to redo it. Uh, I think it's only once though. And if you pass, awesome. But essentially, supplication is that email you get, or that letter you get, where it's pretty much saying like, yeah, you passed and you can basically go out and tell the world that you're a PhD and you can start looking for academic jobs and so on. And so my supplication date was actually in August, August the 1st, 2019. That's when I got the email. And my graduation date was on November the 9th in 2019. So this is kind of like a one year reflection that I'm doing right now after pretty much wrapping up my PhD. And so here are five things I wanna share. Number one, this gown I'm wearing, it's like, you know, the one that I thought it was like a samurai suit. Well, pretty much, I never wear it, like ever. I bought it for like 300 quid, uh, 300 pounds, and like I never wear it. So I thought, hey, if I'm talking about this, I might as well wear it, but it's actually getting really hot, so I'm gonna take it off. Um, but basically, yeah, the gown, you never wear it. And you only wear it during academic events such as graduations or um, opening ceremonies and so on. And so now that I'm working in uh, university as a faculty member helping out in, in the administrative side of things for the bachelor program, basically the only time I ever wear it is basically the opening ceremony and the closing ceremony. So if an academic life is what you want to pursue after wrapping up your PhD, then yeah, definitely get the gown because there's no point in, because uh, you actually need to wear it. And it's, you know, the, all the pomp and circumstance stuff, like you need it for that. Now, if you're going to work industry and you're not going to work in academia, then you really don't need that gown. So for me, it's like, I have the gown, several hundred quid. It's kind of for the job, but basically it's hanging in the closet all the time and I only take it out when the occasion arises. So the second thing I want to reflect upon is that they actually got my diploma wrong. And I'll throw in the clip here where it's pretty much I take out my diploma, I show it to the screen, yeah, I got my PhD, right? Well, apparently it's uh, there's a grammatical error or there's some spelling error in there. I don't remember exactly what it is, but pretty much it's like they got it wrong. And so I actually had to email them and it's like, yo, you got my uh, diploma wrong and I sent in all the paperwork and it's actually not what I submitted on my paperwork. I'm not sure what happened, but can you send me another one? And guess what? I'm getting another diploma. So yeah, awesome. I have two PhD diplomas now. The third reflection point I have is that on November 2019 was the date that I did my graduation, but it was actually, I almost picked another date. I almost picked the one in, I think there was one in January, February, and there was also one in May. And the January and February ones and the May one are basically in 2020. And I am so grateful, so thankful that I actually went with the November one. And I don't know if you guys know how the weather is like in the UK, but pretty much in the fall, the UK is like cloudy and everything and it's rainy. And that's what actually what my day was like um, for my graduation. And so, yeah, that's why I wanted to avoid November. But in retrospect, it actually turned out quite well because if I chose February or if I chose May, what would have happened was, I mean, I'd be grounded because of COVID. I can't even fly there and everyone, you know, my family from Hong Kong or family from Toronto won't be able to fly to Oxford. So basically that is 
something I'm very thankful for. And it's interesting because I ultimately chose the November date because I wanted my diploma to say like, you know, 2013 to 2019. So it's like, it took six years to wrap it up. Um, instead of like, you know, 2013 to 2020, which would be like, you know, oh, it's a separate decade. And it turned out that COVID happened and that's another major thing to reflect upon and just be thankful for. And my kind regards to those who couldn't get their graduation done, but they actually, you know, it's, it's actually just a ceremony. They could still perform what they need to do. They could still go job hunting and everything. The fourth reflection is just more like an update about myself. I've moved on from academic studies to working at a university where I'm helping out with their bachelor's program as an administrator. And you know, it's just working with students and staying in the academic loop through a process of reflection. I realized that working in the university and doing research, you know, that whole publish or perish life, I, it's not something that I actually really enjoy doing or maybe I used to enjoy, but I've kind of changed over the years. And this is something I asked my supervisors before graduating, it's like, well, I'm about to graduate, what should I do, right? And it's like, well, you can apply for academic jobs, you can do this, you can do that, you can, there's a lot of options. And really, I think it's true that when there are a lot of options out there, the paralysis is real because there's paralysis by analysis. And I think I went through that process after I submitted my thesis back in 2019 uh, until I did my graduation. That whole process was a process of just soul searching and, re and just trying to gain that clarity on what I wanted to do. And so that ties into my fifth point is I've actually moved on from just doing pure academia to more of just one foot in academia and another foot in building this channel and also sharing my stories and sharing what I've learned in the social sciences and also just helping people live their best lives. And if you've been following my previous videos, I've dedicated this channel pretty much to career change advice and just helping people bring positive change through their careers. Because that's something I really picked up while I was going through the journey myself. So if this is something you're interested in to start, you can download a guide on how to find your ideal career in the description. I've also hired a developer to build a career personality test, which I've also included in the description. And so if the topic of bringing positive career changes in your life is something of interest to you, then definitely check those things out because they're totally free and they're just resources that I've pulled together to help people find the next step in their career. I've also started a Facebook group called Career Change Advice where you can connect with a community of other people who are interested in making their careers work for them and not the other way around. And so yeah, that's basically a short reflection on the year since getting my PhD. In a future video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the regrets that I've had about my PhD process. So if this is something you're interested in, you know, looking at people's regrets, uh, then definitely subscribe and click the notification bell for when it comes out. Also leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this video. And if you like this video, give it a like and share it with your network if you found it valuable. Take care.